So I've started development of my next big game project, a scratch adaptation of the viral sensation word game Wordle. I don't know about you guys, but I'm hooked on Wordle, and I can't wait to take on this unique challenge in Scratch. I'm going to do things a little differently this time, though. Instead of finishing the whole game up and then trying to find a logical way to teach it to you, I've broken the project up into little chunks, and I'm going to give you guys a peek behind the curtain at the troubleshooting and problems that arise as I try to put this project together. Every couple of days I'm going to be releasing a new chapter of this project and in between I'd love to hear your ideas and your input so you can help me shape this project. Welcome to Dev Diaries. So I'm inside the master scratch file that I'm going to be updating throughout this whole game development process. If you're coding along with me and you get stuck at any point, you can call up this file, which you'll find down in the description down below, and that'll bring you back to where I am right now in the process. So I'm gonna start with the graphics. I've designed a 25 pixel square here and positioned it on the screen. That's my blank default square and we're going to be adding letters to it. I'm going to need a bunch of letters, 26 of them to be precise, in uh, this white configuration. So I've done A, B, C, and D now, and I'll be adding the other ones later on in my spare time. And I'm also going to need two other color states of these squares to show whether we've selected correctly, which is usually green, or whether we're corrected in the wrong place, which is kind of a shade of brownish yellow. And I'll be designing all that stuff up later. Let's just jump right into the code though. So the first challenge we're facing here is how to get Scratch to understand what letter of the keyboard we've typed on and translate that letter into some kind of an action on the screen. Now this turns out to be more challenging than it looks because of the strange way that Scratch handles keyboard inputs. So new Scratchers are often tempted to use this ask block which does create an input window here where we can enter type. Now I don't think that looks good and it also creates all kinds of problems like what if you enter two characters? What if you type a number on the keyboard instead? And there's all kinds of possibilities you have to plan for. So this just is not a good way to enter data like this. The solution is going to have to be one of these two blocks here. The event block when a key is pressed or the sensing block detecting which key is pressed. Both of these basically ask the same question which is did I press a particular key? Did I press an A key? Did I press a B key? I would prefer to have a, a block here that basically outputs what key was pressed, but there's no such block in Scratch. So we're gonna have to basically run a complicated series of queries here. We're playing 20 questions basically with the keys saying, did I press an A? Did I press a B? Did I press a C? Now in previous projects, like my Hangman project that I did last year, uh, what I did was I created a whole 26 of these event blocks and had the same action basically happen for each one of these. When I press an A, tell Scratch that I pressed an A. When I pressed a B, tell Scratch that. But today we're gonna try something a little bit different. Because this sensing block here has a little round circle in it, I am able to place variables into that spot. So I can grab a, a variable from here and pop it into here. So what that will allow me to do is go around in a loop checking to see which letter of the alphabet was pressed without having to actually have a different block of code for each one, meaning I'll be able to do this all inside a nice tidy loop. Let me show you how. So since we don't actually have a block that can detect which key of the keyboard has been pressed, we can go ahead and try and make one in Scratch, and that's what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna go over to my Custom Blocks category, the last possible block option here, and I'm gonna click on the white Make a Block option. We're gonna create a custom block that detects what letter's been pressed, so we'll just call it Detect Letter. Um, we're gonna go around a loop to repeat 26 times, once for each letter of the alphabet. Okay, so in order to assign letters properly, we're gonna to need to know how many times we've gone around this loop. Scratch is able to repeat around loops a fixed number of times, but it can't keep count of how many times it's been around that loop. In computer science, we usually keep track of that number with a variable called the letter I. 
and that's just iterations or a number of times that we've gone around a loop. So I'm going to, right at the beginning of the de this detect letter, set my letter I to zero um, so that as soon as we get into this loop, every time we enter this loop, we're going to change that counter tick up by one. So we're going to go with change I by one. So the first time we go through the loop, the uh, letter I will be one and then two, then three. All right, so now that we're counting how many times we've been around that loop, we need to take that count, that number, and change it into a letter of the alphabet. Now it turns out there's no super simple way to do that in Scratch. There's a couple of approaches you could take and the one that I'm going to suggest right now is we're going to create a variable just called alphabet and inside that variable I'm going to put every single letter of the alphabet so that when we check this alphabet variable and look at the first letter we'll know that the first letter that that I is equal to 1 which is equal to A and I is equal to 2 which is equal to B etc. So this is the beginning of building this up. Now we need to start looking at this list one at a time and comparing it to the value of that I variable. Okay so uh, first of all we need some kind of container to put our final output in. So um, we're, we're basically going to need a variable here called possible letter and that variable is basically going to be the letter that we're trying in this game of 26 questions that we're asking. We're going to say, is it an A? So we want this possible letter variable here to return the, the, the letters one at a time as we go through here. Okay, so we're going to set that possible letter variable. So the possible letter variable that we're picking here is going to be one of the letters out of the 26 in this alphabet variable, basically. It'll be the first one for the first time around, the second one for the second one. So we need a way to tease out basically the first letter of this variable called alphabet. To do that, we're going to have to go to our green blocks. We're going to grab this one here that says letter one of apple. For those of you who haven't used this before, it basically tells you what this, the first letter of this word represents. And so if I click on it, letter one of apple is A, of course. If I go letter two of apple here, it'll return a P. And so it's a way of poking inside words and seeing what their letters are. That's exactly what we're doing here. So we want to put alphabet on the right hand side here. And you can see if I click letter two of alphabet, we get B. Letter four of alphabet is D, etc. And so we're getting very close here. So we want to set the possible letter here to be a certain letter of this big long alphabet variable. And that number four here, as you might have guessed, is going to be that letter I. So letter I of alphabet, which means the first time along the line, it's going to be A, and the second time it's going to be B, etc. I know I'm repeating myself here, guys, but I think I um, just want you to understand the concept. So let's test if this is working by uh, showing that variable possible letter and if we coded this correctly now basically this variable should go through once we click on this define or detect letter we should go through every letter of the alphabet all right let's give that a try here we'll zoom in a little bit for your viewing ease and you can see things are happening so quickly there something is happening but it's just taking too much uh, too little time because of the speed with which this computer is running. So I'm going to insert a little delay here, just like 0.1 seconds, and that'll make this more obvious. Now we don't need this in the final version, but because um, we do want it running super fast. Okay, but let's click on this, and you can see we're going through the letters of the alphabet here one at a time until we get to Z and it stops and we get out of our loop. Okay, so this is working the way that we want it to. So now we are setting that possible letter variable to letters of the alphabet. And now we need to start looking to see which, whether the letter that we selected is the letter that was pressed on the keypad. So on the keyboard, sorry. So we're gonna grab an if statement here. I'm gonna um, get rid of this wait 0.1. We might use it again in a second though. So inside here, I'm gonna check and see which key we've pressed. But instead of putting uh, a specific key here, we're going to say if 
the possible letter, the letter that we're cycling through here. And so it's gonna check if an A is pressed the first time and if a B is checked the second time, etc. So let's, in this round spot where we can conveniently put stuff, we're gonna put our possible letter variable. So this if statement, which is asking that question, um, is this the key that was pressed? It's gonna keep answering no until that one time when it actually comes across that letter that we actually are pressing. In that moment, we have to store that information, the one that was successful into a different variable. This possible letter isn't gonna be useful to us the next time around because it's gonna to change to the next letter and the next letter. So we need to freeze that piece of information in a way that the computer can use it later. So I'm gonna set a new variable here. I've created another global variable here called letter to add. And this is the actual letter that we're going to change this block into if we're successful. So as I said, we're freezing that possible letter. So let's grab that variable that says possible letter and we'll drag it into the spot here. So now we're making that letter to add equal to the current value of the letter when this is true. Okay, beautiful. So we're pretty much ready to test this. I'm already showing the letter to add variable down here at the bottom here. And we're gonna wanna test and see if when we press a key on the keyboard, um, whether it knows what letter we pressed. So we can use this detect letter block, but the detect letter block um, doesn't actually detect a button press. So this isn't the final configuration, but just for testing purposes right now, I'm gonna grab a block that says when space key pressed, a keyboard event block here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna change to say any key. So as soon as it detects that any key has been pressed on your keyboard, it's gonna run this script here to detect what letter has been pressed and it is gonna change the value of this variable letter to add to match that letter. Okay, so let's max out the screen here and we'll keep our eye on this variable and let's try pressing some letters on the alphabet. So I'm gonna press B and there we go. That variable changes to B. Here's a C, a D, A, B, just like that, beautiful. So the letter to add is doing exactly what we want it to do. So now the next step is just going to be changing this costume around to match the value of that variable, which is actually a pretty easy thing to do because we've already named our costumes to match the name of the letter. So now all we have to do in underneath this detect letter script is go switch costume to match the letter to add, whatever that letter to add is. There we go. And so now we can see that the graphic is gonna change as well. So when I click the letter A, the graphic turns to an A, B, C, D. Beautiful, and that'll continue working for the rest of the letter of the alphabet once I get those drawn and ready to go. So we've successfully completed our first challenge, which is getting Scratch to actually listen to the key that we pressed on the keyboard and make the screen graphic react to that letter and reflect it with the costume choice. Next up, we need to set this up so that we have an entire row of letters working properly so that after we type the first letter, we switch over to the next block and start typing that letter and the next after that. If you have your own ideas about how to go about doing that, try remixing this file and see if you can add your own code to solve that next challenge that's coming up. I'll be back to show you how I did it in my next session.